be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's be in the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that has been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountains, mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and on rich pasture. 
They shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture and to drink of clear water that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 95. Let us read responsively by half verse. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. For the Lord is a great God. In his hand are all the depths of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down. For he is our God. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. When your fathers tested me, Forty years long I was grieved with his generation and said, Of whom I swore in my wrath.
our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, many of you know that when I was a child, my parents were Presbyterian missionaries to South Korea. And in the summers, we would spend time at a missionary beach community on the western coast of the peninsula. One summer, we rented a cottage that overlooked what we call the Back Bay, and there was a very steep dirt path nearby that many people took down the precipitous incline to the beach. Going down wasn't so hard, but even for energetic children, climbing up was strenuous. One day, a Korean man showed up at our door and asked my mother for a glass of water. He had clearly scaled the near cliff and was sweaty and out of breath. Mama gladly obliged. Then he thanked her and went on his way. Several hours later, soldiers from the South Korean army showed up saying that they were chasing a North Korean spy and they had reason to believe that he had come our way. Mama said, well, a man did come up from the beach, and he asked me for some water, so I gave it to him, and then he left. Well, one of the soldiers just freaked and started screaming at Mama and said, he was a spy. Why did you help him? And Mama said, because he was thirsty. Extending merciful kindness to the thirsty 
is one aspect found in today's parable known as the parable of the sheep and the goats. Matthew records it as Jesus' last public teaching before his arrest and crucifixion later in the week. This is the first time Jesus is recorded as referring to himself as king, and today, the last Sunday before Advent, is known as Christ the King Sunday. As Jesus describes his glorious second coming as king of the universe to gather his church and take the believers into his and his father's majestic eternal presence, he likens the process to a shepherd who separates the sheep from a commingled herd from the goats, in a commingled herd from the goats. He states that the sheep will be given a place of honor on his right hand with the promise of the Father's blessing of everlasting, ecstatic union with him. But the goats will be given a place of scorn on his left hand and cursed with everlasting, irreversible, torturous banishment from God. Jesus then lists seven ways the people labeled sheep or goats showed or failed to show mercy to others through food, drink, hospitality, clothing, nursing care, and visitation. One commentator pointed out that Jesus did not invent the idea of service to the needy. Old Testament law reflected the loving and kind heart of God by requiring landowners to leave the edges of their fields unharvested so that widows and orphans could obtain food by gleaning. Employers were required to pay their workers daily because workers depended on daily wages for daily bread. And no one was to take advantage of any widow or fatherless child. The prophets continued that emphasis. Amos denounced those who oppress the poor, who crush the needy. Isaiah said that to please God, fasting needs to include distributing bread to the hungry, bringing the poor home for dinner, and clothing the naked. A frequent misinterpretation of the parable of the sheep and goats is that the king, that is Jesus, bases his judgment in culling humanity upon the works listed. But that is off the mark. My mama used to categorize people into two groups. She said they either had a sunny disposition, that is being continually cheerful, positive, and pleasant, or a sour disposition, that is being continually grumpy, negative, and unpleasant and she called the latter type a pill. <laughs> she would say something like, oh, that person is such a pill. And she was known to tell my siblings, never me, you're such a pill. <laughs> I was the goody two shoes. The underlying truth when Jesus lists the acts of mercy that some perform while others didn't is that the people's penchant to give or withhold aid was based on their disposition. But not just any old disposition. Those that showed mercy had the disposition of Jesus himself. And those that withheld mercy did not reflect the presence of Jesus in their hearts at all. But how does one go about getting the disposition of Christ? How does one become a person who defaults to helping the needy in their path? How does one transform into a person who does not calculate filling a need, but who simply cheerfully does so, motivated by a loving and generous heart? How does it become a person's first nature to bless others as Jesus' agent? The answer is by the sanctification by the Holy Spirit. 
Sanctification means supernaturally morphing into the likeness of Jesus. And as Father Ted and J.D. and I frequently remind you, the likeness of Jesus means that without thinking, a person displays the attributes of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And Paul writes, against these there is no law. Nobody's going to fuss at you for being too kind or too loving or too patient. But what prompts the Holy Spirit to grant such a gift of transformation to a person? The answer is that the person has come to the realization that he or she is a sinner in God's eyes and that nothing he or she can ever do can measure up to God's standard of holiness. Nothing that he or she can ever do can persuade a holy God to forgive them of their sin. Isaiah wrote that all of our good works to gain God's forgiveness are worth no more to him than filthy rags. So this person has nothing left to do but to throw himself or herself onto the mercy of God for forgiveness. But God's law clearly states that in order for him to forgive sin, blood must be shed. And the blood must be that of a spotless, sinless life. And how can that spotless, sinless life be found, much less be willing to stand in as a sacrifice for others? A rather lengthy but salient observation by Oswald Chambers beautifully answers this question. He says, the only ground, the only ground on which God can forgive us is the tremendous tragedy of the cross of Christ. Forgiveness, which is so easy for us to accept, cost the agony of Calvary. Forgiveness is the divine miracle of grace. It cost God the cross of Jesus Christ before he could forgive and remain a holy God. Compared with the miracle of forgiveness of sin, he writes, the experience of sanctification is slight. Sanctification is simply the marvelous expression of the forgiveness of sin in a human life. But the thing that awakens the deepest well of gratitude in a human being is that God has forgiven sin. Forgiveness means not merely, Chamber writes, that I am saved from hell and made right for heaven. Forgiveness means that I am forgiven into a... I am forgiven into a recreated relationship with God, into identification with God in Christ. He finishes with the miracle of redemption is that God turns me, the unholy one, into the standard of himself, the holy one, by putting into me a new disposition, the disposition of Jesus Christ. This explains why the people in the parable who showed kindness to the needy were so surprised when the king pointed out his pleasure over their good works. I return to Oswald Chambers to illustrate. He says, we become so abandoned to God that is unconditionally surrendered to him, that the consciousness of being used never enters in. 
When we are consciously being used as broken bread and poured out wine, that is, as a blessing to others in the service of God, there is another stage to be reached where all consciousness of ourselves and of what God is doing through us is eliminated. A saint is never consciously a saint. A saint is consciously dependent on God. You see, the king did not reward the sheep on his right hand with eternal glory because they performed good works. They performed good works because they were in a relationship of loving gratitude with him for his miracle of the grace of forgiveness by the cross, and for that he rewards them. By citing the list of good works, the king is simply saying, your disposition of loving kindness heralds to the world that you are mine. By the same token, the king did not banish the goats on his left hand to the tragic agony of eternal separation from himself because they failed to do good works. They, they failed to perform good works because they missed out on receiving the king's merciful disposition by rejecting the king. And it was for rejecting the king that he banished them. The king is saying to them, your disposition of callous indifference heralds to the world that you are not mine. I end this sermon with my mama as I began it. I told Howard as I was preparing this, mama is heavy on my mind today. And the Lord actually brought to me memories that were 60 years old that I hadn't even thought of. So thank you, Lord. Mama taught school in Charleston County for many years. Each winter, she would quietly purchase coats for her students who had none. Some of her colleagues would ask her, why do you spend your hard-earned money on these kids? Because they're cold, she would answer. May God grant that everyone who hears this sermon grasps the stunning reality of the ultimate act of mercy, of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and that in humbly and gratefully surrendering their life to the risen Lord may be gifted with his compassionate and motivating holy disposition. It's how he blesses the world. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is.
spoken for the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. For Foley Beach, our Archbishop, and Mark Lawrence, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all public service, especially Donald, our president, the members of Congress, the justices of the Supreme Court, and all state and local authorities. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are, who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those on our parish prayer list, John Ald, Chuck and Jan Idlett, Pat Barry, Scott Barry, Joshua Bellachico, Jennifer Blevins, Sterling Bowling, Lionel Cantrell, Scott Coker, the Crowley family, Dan and Betty Ann Davis, Jody Dorr, Roger Donnelly, the Duvall family, the Elvis family, Susan, Susan Eschbacher, Al Fisher, Andrew Fermanchik, Chris Goodson, Jamie Hemingway, Doug and Jenny Henderson, Brooks Jenkins, Penny and Kelly Jenkins, Martha Kiefer, Bill and Louise Miller, Dane and Peggy Neesmith, the Nolan family, Gary and Ellen Pruitt, the Quinn family, the Rambo family, Roy and Martha C., the Sloan family, Pam Stroud and Nancy Willems, and those with job loss or reduction in hours and pay, and our expectant mothers, Christy Cavett, Mary Gray Lewis, and Mabry Osborne, and our homebound, Francis Cheatham, Pat McCullough, Louise Perry, Becky Tootin, and Grace Young, and our deployed military, Brian Boyer, Michael Dean, and Mary Emily Slott. Please pray for all men and women serving in the military and for Bishop Campicha and the Diocese of Marsabit, Kenya especially our tree church partners and our Haitian partners in the Church of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of resurrection, we extend our sympathy to the family and friends in the death of parishioner Caroline Williams, to Bernard Voltz, father of Chelsea Congdon, and to the Shelley family in the death of Alan's brother, William. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we give thanks for the Seafarers Ministry, which serves 65,000 crew members on cargo ships that pass through the Charleston Harbor each year. As these crewmen are far from home for months at a time, inspire and enable the Seafarers volunteers to continue to offer them friendship and kindness transportation to shops and attend medical appointments, as well as computer access to reach out to their families so far away. Lord, please bless the Christ Church volunteers who help with the seafarers and our congregation's participation in this year's Christmas box ministry collection for 2020. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty and most merciful God, in this time of the coronavirus pandemic and all other perils of our world, we flee to you for strength and protection. 
Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give skill and success to all those who minister to the sick by prospering the means made use for their care and cure. And grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts, heavenly wisdom, which leads to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. In thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole hearts, we have not loved our enemies as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Amen. Please stand. The people and with your spirit. Peace with you, J.D. Welcome, Christ Church kids. Please be seated. A few announcements, um, they're all in the book, and I hope you'll take it home, but uh, I do want to call some things to your particular attention, and one is that um, it is my you know, heart's desire year in and year out that, um, that as many people as come to churches on Christmas and Easter would come every Sunday, and we see that that's you know, not the case, but we do hope that they will come on Christmas and Easter, and uh, we welcome them on Christmas and Easter. We hope you will be with us on this Christmas uh, for our services. And because we hope that you and many others will come, uh, as we usually do, uh, we're having several services so that we can uh, not be overflowed in any one service and we can spread out like we need to in these times of the coronavirus. And so we really, really need you to register. We need you to go ahead and be deciding now and let us know which of the services uh, you'll come to. We have uh, two in the afternoon in the parish hall at 3 and 4.30. They're designed specifically for young families. Uh, there'll be a, a good service for young families. I hope that you'll uh, sign up for those if that's you. Uh, we also will have a service in the parish hall at 6 and one in the church here at 6 p.m. <coughs> sign up to tell us which one uh, you'd like to come to. And then there'll be a 10.30 service here in the church also uh, that later that evening. Then we'll have a uh, service in the historic church um, at mm, is it 10 or 10.30 on uh, Christmas Day, but the, the, the time is in here. So um, if you're coming on Christmas Day, let us know also. Thank you for that. The youth are having a bonfire and s'mores at Alonzo and um, Lauren Crawford's house tonight. There's a nice big deck. It'll be outside. Bring your mask. Bring a friend. Uh, enjoy each other. Uh, get to know the Crawfords better and each other. That's tonight. The um, <clears throat> Rector's Forum continues. We'll be starting an Advent series next Sunday, which is the first Sunday in Advent. I hope you'll come and be a part of that at 1010 in the Parish Hall. The uh, office will be closed this Thursday uh, for Thanksgiving. Uh, we're normally closed on Friday anyway, so Thursday and Friday off this week uh, for the office. And uh, on, on Wednesday uh, evening uh, in the historic church, we've scheduled a Thanksgiving service. Please register for that also because if we max out, we're going to put a sign on that door to come up here and uh, uh, take the numbers. So if, if we have enough, we'll be here, but otherwise we're in the historic church. Hope you can join us. Yes. 
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty, and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. From the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And on is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. And we do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Let us now receive the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ the bread of heaven. And on behalf of the church, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.